All right, so yesterday I created this animation right here, which was inspired by a Cinema 4D tutorial I came across on Pinterest. That's gonna be linked in the description. And it looks like liquid, very simple, kind of calm liquid, but I didn't use any real fluid dynamics. I faked fluid, which made my life way easier. So I did it in two ways. It was in the shader editor with some nodes and I used dynamic paint uh, for that kind of coming in kind of motion that the Nike logo had. And it made it really easy. I did not have to touch fluid at all. In a sense, I faked the fluid. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I made that fake fluid. And this is applicable in a lot of different contexts. So there's some really cool things here. Quickly, Real-Time Materials is currently 35% off for the rest of this month. You can use the code two years. Uh, hit the link in the description, get it on Blender Market. Again, 35% off all those really cool procedural materials. Let's get into the tutorial. So if you don't want to use the Nike logo or, you know, a logo at all, you can use any object you want. I'm going to go ahead um, and you can say, in this case, just use uh, a cube and just kind of like crunch it in like this like this and use that as your logo to animate and you will get the same exact effect. So the first thing we're gonna tackle is the dynamic paint. So go ahead and import a plane and then I'm gonna set up my camera now so that we can kind of keep everything in one spot in a sense for this. So I'm gonna keep it up like this, then I'm gonna scale it out and then I'm just gonna go ahead and subdivide it. I wanna have cubes, I mean, uh, you know, cubic faces or something close to it. And I'm gonna make it, I mean, super, super dense. Uh, if you don't wanna go dense immediately like me, go ahead and just kinda make it kinda dense and then throw a subdivision surface on there. That'll get the trick done for you. And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hit RX 180, that'll flip it over so that the dynamic paint will extrude the way we want. Um, that's just kind of the hacky, easy way to do it. So what we're gonna do here is take this plane and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it into dynamic paint. So I'm gonna click on dynamic paint, keep it as a canvas, add canvas, and we're gonna look here from paint to displace. This guy, which is a mesh, we're gonna go ahead, first I'm gonna hit X and uh, limited dissolve, just so we can be lower poly. And then we're gonna do a dynamic paint, uh, canvas to brush, add brush. And now we can see it's extruding out, but it doesn't look like fluid, it doesn't look like liquid. How are we gonna do that? So I'm gonna click on the plane. We're gonna go here to the uh, modifier tab and we're gonna get on a smooth corrective and then bring that repeat until you have really this beautiful, very smooth look. And this doesn't work in all contexts, but for like a logo like this or a letter, or like, you know, something like 360 days of type, this is absolutely perfect. And so now we can go ahead and actually animate um, our object that is creating this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it down and you can kind of see it working like that. You can see the dynamic paint working. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down and quickly animate it. So I'm gonna start my logo uh, rotated a bit, something like this. And so we're gonna animate it in the Y and the Z and we're gonna go to say like 70 frames. And then I'm gonna bring the rotation to zero and bring my Z up to something like this. And then now I'm gonna hide the curve. And you can see it brings in, it takes a minute. And so you can kind of bring those keyframes in if you want to speed up the animation. All right, nice. So that is the first part, just the kind of, kind of goopy liquid. And you can also expound on that um, extrusion amount here in the settings. You can go here to max displace, but I like this. It's subtle, it's good, it works. So what we're gonna do now is add a material to this. First, we need to bake it. So what I'm gonna do, looks like, I mean, it stops at like 60. So I'm gonna bake out about 70 frames. So we'll go to the cache and make sure you have, you have to save the file first before you can bake anything. So now that this is baked, you can actually render it out. Um, as keyframes and all that, not keyframes, but as an image or, you know, PNG sequence, all that fun stuff, whatever you want to do. So now the next part is faking it with um, the, the, so we did the dynamic paint. Now we need to create the other part of the liquid, which is in the materials. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to cycles and let's just go ahead and add in a metallic material and let's get our lighting going. So I'm gonna bring my uh, timeline over here so that the Nike logo is revealed. And we're gonna go here, get the area light. I'm gonna hit G, 
and then hit R twice to rotate it. And then we'll bring that power to like a thousand and make it nice and red. And then we need to bring the roughness down. And then maybe we can say, let's go ahead and scale this up and bring it closer. So you can just kind of rotate this around. And then what we can do is hit Shift D and then kind of rotate him around by hitting R twice and go with a blue. So that'll do that. I'm gonna bring my world brightness to black. Okay, so now we have this really cool looking scene and in the material, you can bring that roughness down to really create whatever look you're trying to go for. So now we have this, which is, it's fine, but it doesn't look quite like liquid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here to the shading tab and add the rest of that liquid look. And it's very, very simple. So what we need to do is get a bump node and we'll plug this bump node into the normal and then plug the, get a noise texture, go here to 4D, hit control T with that node wrangler add on enabled. And we're gonna go ahead and put that into the height. And it looks absolutely terrible. Bring that, bring the roughness all the way to zero and then bring your scale to like one and then you can play with the W, but bring that strength down until you kind of like it. And now we have, now we have liquid. The W will animate that liquid for you. And if you bring that roughness in, you're gonna get you know higher ripples, anything you want in that case. But now you've created the liquid, which not it, it'll go on top of that Nike logo. So now that you have this, you can animate everything in this case. So now you can take it maybe, 120 frames. Then we can hit I, go over here and say, I mean, it's gonna be about five seconds. So imagine five seconds of liquid, I. And then now you can just kind of watch it. It's gonna be blinky and weird. Uh, so you can say, watch it in material preview. So this is material preview. But now you have a really cool looking scene with just some fake liquid with that Nike logo and it gets the job done on that. Don't mind my cat playing with a bottle cap over there. Maybe make that um, that brightness a lot higher. Kind of have some more fun with this. But this is really gonna get you that liquid look very, very easily, relatively quickly and then you can render it out and add in uh, your own kind of compositing effects, but it's super cool. And you can use this in a lot of different contexts and different examples where, hey, I need to get fluid. I can't do fluid simulations. We'll use that noise texture. Um, even the Musgrave texture looks great for fluid. And then using, using dynamic paint is also gonna get you this kind of fluid-esque look. And it's perfect for motion graphics. I love this technique. Uh, feel free to use it in your own projects. There you go. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, don't forget about the real-time material sale. If you want to get some procedural materials for your projects, for your animations, check that out. 35% off. Use the code two years. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.